Hello, Neox here with AxeCast, and you're probably wondering why I have an Xbox 360 controller. It is, well, we're going to do a hack. Now, for this hack, you are required for an Xbox 360 controller, and a cable, and an Xbox 360 RF module, which is conveniently placed in here, like so. It is, the RF module is the module that has the rings on it, and also the power button. You can order these online for fairly cheap. I got this one on eBay for three dollars. So, without further ado, let's take a look at the materials. All right. So, in our fancy dancy box right here, we have ourselves. A voltage tester. Now, this is a multimeter that is uh, that, and the function. This is a multimeter made by uh, GB Instruments. Um, you can get these really cheap at any hardware store. Has a little tuning dial on it, and what we're going to be using it is setting it to the uh, 1K ohm. Are you good? I don't know if you'll be able to see this on the video, but you're going to want to set this to the ohm testing because we're going to be checking to see if we get connected. If uh, We're going to be checking this cable right here called a, just a USB cable that I jacked from an iPod, and we're going to be figuring out the pinouts. So what we do is we set it to the 1K ohm testing, and just touch the two metal clips together to ensure that we do in fact get a zero reading. If we do not get a zero reading, like we aren't right now, it just I'll just clip it. Yeah, that's okay. So if we get something over a zero or under a zero when they're connected like this, we just adjust it with the uh, little knobby right here. And yeah, we're good to go with that. Um, you're probably going to need uh, need some pliers. I have several different kinds of pliers and end nippers right here. These are useful for clipping off the ends of frayed wires or making something look real nice in the end. These are hooked needle nose pliers and standard regular needle nose pliers. We also have in this fancy little tool chest a pair of, I think they're tweezers. Um, these are very good for, well, just getting into tiny places and stuff. Just keep them just in case. You never know. We also have ourselves a knife. Useful for stripping wires, cutting wires, making a quick little mark somewhere. I don't know. I. It's a really good knife, just a regular buck knife. It's, uh, yeah, made in the USA, which is good. Um, you're also going to need need some solder, uh, preferably rosin core so that you don't have to use flux. With rosin core solder, it comes with the flux uh, inside of it. Uh, this is standard PC solder that you get out of any PC kit, PC repair kit. I do not know if this one has flux or not, but just for safety sakes, I got my, I got a whole roll of uh, 6040 rosin coarse solder. Um, yeah, we'll probably end up using that, depending on the size. Also, we have ourselves a Radio Shack made soldering iron, and I just put a brand spanking new tip on this just so that we could get in here. The wires we're going to be soldering on this board are really, really tiny. 
So we're gonna need to get in very, very close with the with the soldering iron, and as you can see, I'm kind of shaky right now. But we're gonna be needing to get in, and that's why I put in a fresh new tip. And last but not least is our electrostatic safety kit. Now. You should never handle electronic parts without this. Uh, what this does is you just strap it onto your wrist, like so. And without too much difficulty, after you strap it onto your wrist, you clip it to any metal surface that, that can ground you. I'm just going to connect it to our little desk here that we're doing this project on. Our project desk. Uh, flat surface. Oh, a little bit of shakies there. Sorry about that. And looks like we're fixed again. Cool. Alright, so once we're, so now that we are properly secured, we got our tools, I am going to set up the soldering iron stand and we will be back in a moment. Hello, welcome back. Um, one more thing before we get started is you're going to need some sort of a diode that can handle up to 5 volts. Now what I have here are some Zener diodes. Uh, let me take a close look at it. Model... one n four one four eight. Um, I don't remember if these ones actually go up to 5 volts, but I did use them in a Xbox 360 JTAG hack. Uh, so it'll work. Um, one thing to note with the diodes is, if I bring this up close, you'll see a black line. Are you able to see that? Is that focused enough? Yeah, okay. You'll see a black line, and that right there the direction of flow go for electricity goes from here on up through this way but doesn't allow uh, electrons to go backwards so this is just a one-way circuit um, yeah you're gonna need a set of those so without further ado we're gonna take our iPod USB cable right here which I already clipped the end off and we're gonna strip the wires and find out which one is pin 1 according to this so we'll grab our knife here and we will go ahead and strip away very carefully Bam. A wire. Now you can use an X-Acto knife. That would actually be probably better. Um, reason I'm using a regular buck knife for this is to show you guys how you could do it with just basic tools. You don't need a whole lot of fancy tools to do this kind of hack. It's actually pretty basic and self-explanatory. easier with like wire strippers or any other tool other than a knife but you can do it with a knife it just takes some patience right. come on now 
as we can see, this is a multi-threaded wire. Let me bring it up close for you guys. It's a multi-threaded wire, so what that means is after I'm done stripping, I am going to want to collect all the little pieces of wire right here, kind of pull on the sheathings, and pull down a little bit so that we get a little bit more exposed wire. Go in with our knife like this, slice, and then twist so that we can try and make it as much of one strand of wire as possible. So I'll be back in a moment to finish the other three wires and I will show you how to test these. And welcome back. Okay, so I stripped the four wires and we're going to want to uh, test which one's pin one on the U USB end of the cable, the part that goes into the computer, the part that goes into the computer. Now, from looking at my sheet, we have a bottom uh, USB, so that's probably USB 2.0, and pin 1 is the one that is closest to the right side. So over here is pin 1. Now once we find pin 1, the rest of it is pretty simple and self-explanatory. So we're going to go ahead and grab our multimeter, double check to make sure it's zero. Now as you can see it's not quite zero so what we do is we adjust the knob a little bit and bring it down to zero. Um, digital multimeters are a little bit better about this. You don't have to adjust it. Uh, just analog multimeters are a whole lot cheaper. I also modified this so that it has the clip on it. Um, just took a little bit of wire. It's kind of ugly, but it works. So we'll first clip onto the white wire and take our prod and put it on the inside of this and check to see if, the, if that one's zero. If not, then we move to the next pin. And it looks to be that white is pin two. So we move to the next color, which looks to be kind of a gunmetal gray green clip onto that we start with pin 1 nothing pin 2 nothing pin 3 so it must be pin 4 and there we are pin 4 and we'll get see a pink will probably be pin 3 yep pink's pin 3 and then we'll go with red and I do believe by process of elimination that it's pin 1 but to double check just to make sure and there we have it okay so we have this as pin 1, red pin 1, uh, oh man I should have been writing this down. Another good tool you should always have is a pen and a piece of paper to write on. So let's see if I can't 
I'll just use my notes right here. So pin one was red. Uh, pin two, I believe was pink. Just go through this again real quick. Pin three, yeah, pin three was pink. Two was the gunmetal gray? No, that was ground, right? No, pin two was white. Yeah, pin two was white. Just double check again, make sure nothing's been. Wow, getting all tangled up here. <laughs> okay. Sure, nothing else is going to interfere. Pin two is white. Okay. So the green is ground. Pin four. Okay, now we're good. get that out of the way. And let me, now I'm getting all my information from a website called, uh, hang on. Uh, www. Uh, sevensins.com S E the number seven E N and then sins is spelled like S I N S and they got a whole video tutorial and I'll probably put the link in the description so that you guys can follow along for yourselves and make it really simple and easy now we're going to take a look at this What we're going to want to do is connect all of these wires in line according to this. Now it identifies pin 1 on this board to be the furthest to the left. So we have pin 1 being red right here we're going to want to put that right there. Now, now before we do that, we're going to want to take a Zener diode, like so, and kind of give it a little bit of a bend and a clip on the, uh, on the uh, black side. What we're going to want to do is make all the electricity go directly into the main power. Come in here with the pliers, straighten it up a little bit. And what we're going to want to do is take our soldering iron and tin the tip Tinning's just putting some solder on it. Give it a quick wipe on the sponge. Do another tin with the rosin core. We're going to want to take our pliers and pick it up. And go to pin one and solder it in place. Now I recommend resting your uh, forearm on st on a stable surface. You just gotta hold it there for a few seconds. Maybe it'll work better if I tin the uh, P 
piece as well. So we'll just grab ourselves a little bit more solder. Put a bit on this. It's hair. Oh, it's magnetized. Huh. That's cool. That's handy. Alright, time for round two. So we get in above it and start heating up the pin. Yeah, that's working better now. And we're there. See? Quick and easy. Like a surgeon. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. So once you got it right there, according to pin one on the board, which is right there, we go ahead and take pin one of the USB cable, which is red. Now this is an iPod USB cable, so the uh, color of the wires will not be industry standard. They're, they kind of proprietorize the uh, coloring of the wires. Which is a little annoying, yes, but hey, what what can you do? I, I found this, like, outside on my walk today, which was kind of perfect. So we just clip the end of that. We're going to bring it right up there and solder it again. Now we're going to grab, move these out of the way, grab our soldering iron again, tin the tip. So we're grabbing a little bit of solder. And that's a whole lot of solder. It's okay, the excess fell off. And we go ahead and just tin the tip of the wire by getting some solder on it. This actually kind of helps seat it to the circuit board. Makes it easier to have the solder flow. And... Take this wire, if I can grip it, and let's see if I can't do this so that you guys can see it real well. Um, other hand, maybe? Yeah, let's try swapping hands real quick and not using the pliers. Alright, yeah, you, you can probably see that. Let's double check that you can, in fact, see that. Always put the soldering iron back. You don't need to burn yourselves with it. It is a very hot tool, and I've put many holes in my fingers thanks to it. Okay. And yeah, I know, it, this is kind of a slow process, but in order to make sure that you do everything correctly, you gotta take it slow at times. So we tin the tip again. And we go ahead and put the red wire onto the Zener diode. little bit of solder and once you got it good and l once you see the solder kind of just roll off the tip it's secured see nice and secured now for just a quick cleanup what you do is just take the end nippers clip right there done now before we're actually done with this, we're going to be putting 
the uh, putting a little bit of a hot glue right there so that we can ensure that nothing will contact. As you can see, the white wire was uh, stripped a little too far down for my comfort. I could probably just clip that off and just kind of like bend this in a weird direction and it'll work fine. Um, still, I am going to put some hot glue on to make sure that everything isn't connecting. That shouldn't be connecting. So, next thing we need to do is solder pin 2, which, oh boy, is the white wire. Let's just go ahead and clip the end off of that to number 2 on the board. Now you're probably starting to see a pattern here, if you're uh, watching and paying attention, that all the uh, all the pins are going to be connecting right next to, in order, from left to right to the pinouts on the USB cable, directly in line. So pin 1 connects to pin 1 on the USB cable, pin 2 on the USB cable connects to pin 2 on the board. So I'll be back in a moment after I do the soldering and I'll show you the finished product. Okay, so here we are. All pins are wired. I went ahead, double checked that I pl plugged everything in uh, into the right area using the USB test, USB tester, the uh, multimeter. Um, a little note on these diodes when you're testing the diode, make sure that the black, your black lead is on the black side of the diode and your red leads on the on the side that is doesn't have the black line and you'll you'll be good everything will confirm correctly and yeah so there we have it it should be successfully hacked now the reason i have uh this uh controller charger for the xbox controller is so that we could sync the controller to the computer. Um, if you didn't, you'd have to you'd have to sync this board with your controller before you can started this hack. I'm guessing right here uh, is the memory module, and it stores all known controllers that that it uh, can get. And if you wanted to, let's say, build your own Xbox 360 controller, you're going to have to grab the uh, ROM data off of this and figure out what crystal uh, this is so that you can get the correct frequency. Uh, other than that, it's probably just simpler and cheaper to buy a used part. So, without further ado, let's get into the driver installation and the testing. Hello, welcome back. Um, wow, that was a really, really long video on just how to like put it all together. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to break this up into two parts. First part is what you've obviously watched, the creation of said device of uh, USB wireless receiver for the Xbox 360 controller. Uh, the second part, I will get into driver installation and how to integrate it with your PC. Um, I hope you enjoyed this uh, excessively long tutorial <laughs> on soldering and uh, creation of the, of the USB uh, wireless receiver. Um, I'll give you guys a little bit of a hint for what my next Minecraft video will be. Right here. So what we're looking at is Epona's song. Now, there is probably a thousand and one note block tutorials out there, but I thought I'd do one for myself because I was kind of just playing around with them in Minecraft today. Uh, I set up a redstone world, kind of refresh myself with redstone and 
how everything works in the new Minecraft mechanics in 152 on up. Um, and I discovered there is different notes, different sounds to to the uh, Minecraft videos. Uh, Minecraft videos, different uh, sounds to the Minecraft Minecraft blocks. We got wood, which does bass guitar, sand, which is a snare drum, glass, which is like clicks, sticks, and stone blocks, obsidian, yada yada, uh, bass drum, and dirt is the piano slash harp. <coughs> so that's what I'll be working. I also have a little thing on note reading so that I can actually tune these blocks and it should be kind of fun. I'll uh, I'll let you guys go. Have a good one. Good luck. Good gaming. Hackscast out.